When I was a preteen, like a lot of kids, I loved to watch wrestling. My nephews and I would act out our favorite matches and pretend to be our favorite wrestlers, and we would usually play the not it game to decide who had to be the villain. We watched big time wrestling on KTVU Channel 2 out of San Francisco. Look who finally got done with her lunch break. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, direct from Los Angeles. Big time wrestling is on the air. As I said, the wrestling we watched happened in San Francisco. There were two other operations called Big Time Wrestling in Detroit and Boston, not Los Angeles. I don't know about the other two cities, but the organization that put on Big Time Wrestling in San Francisco was called the American Wrestling Association, or AWA. Here we're in L.A. with the Big Time Wrestling Association. Just go with it. We're way too familiar with this show and its less than stellar ways of covering other people's work. On my right, Bates Motel. The majority of the AWA wrestlers use their own names. Very few had fancy stage names. It's quite different here. Two consecutive matches. Sucker, I'm Bates Motel. You're going to check into the ring, but you'll never check out. Who tonight faces Mr. Nice Guy. Undefeated champion returning here tonight from a successful tour in Yakima, Washington. <laughs> in 1986, Yakima had a population of less than 50,000, but apparently it had enough wrestling arenas to constitute a tour. Well, every town has its priorities, I guess. <laughs> wrestling? I can't believe this. A friend of mine, a PhD. A man of science is watching wrestling? Yeah. Well, I was waiting for the special on stomach stapling, and I figured I'd kill some time with some sports. Sports? Yeah. Yeah, what are you kidding? Wrestling is to sports is what the gong show is to star search. Do I need to explain the gong show? May as well. See, from the earliest days of radio and TV, people enjoyed seeing amateurs come onto a show and perform. The most famous of these was Amateur Hour, first hosted by Major Bose and later by Ted Mack. In 1976, TV mogul and comedian wannabe Chuck Barris decided to revive the idea, but with a twist, he'd be the host and do a poor job of telling bad jokes. But that's not the twist. The twist is a panel of three celebrity judges would evaluate each act, and each performer had 45 seconds to show what they could do. If one of the panelists didn't like the act, after the 45 seconds, they could pick up this big mallet and hit a gigantic gong that was hanging behind them, and the act was a reject. Those lucky few who didn't get gonged could possibly go on to win the grand prize of $516.32. Yes, these are the jokes, folks. Believe it or not, it ran for two years. And yes, I think I watched all of them. Do you have any idea what kind of bimbos watch wrestling now? You mean bimbos like Johnny B? He really enjoys it, and Bates Motel is one of his favorites. I haven't followed this stuff in over 50 years, but back then, the heroes and villains were clearly defined. In the AWA, one of their most popular villains was Ray Stevens, known as the Blonde Bomber. I hated him because he was always beating up on my favorite heroes, calling them names. He was not a nice person. Then suddenly one day, he was a nice person. Overnight, he went from being a villain to being a hero, and the public decided, just go with it. He was entertaining enough that we didn't care which side he was on. We just wanted to watch him wrestle. But the day he switched sides was the day I knew for sure that there was something scripted about all this. I had grown a little and lost interest by that time, so it wasn't a big deal to me, but I did find it interesting. Now, every form of entertainment has its super fans, and wrestling seems to attract a lot of them. Like this guy. Motel, you got all the moves. Get out of here, you crazy morons! <laughs> No vacancy on the champ. He's the motel man. How could they let him do that? Relax, it's just Milt. The fan of fans. They'll do anything for the guys. Milt is a pretty simple guy. He keeps food on the table by working as a towel boy at the arena. He doesn't want a lot. He just likes being this close to his heroes.
He also fantasizes about being one of them. He'll play around with the cape and mask and let his imagination soar for a bit. Help us! Somebody help us! Help! 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 You have to love all those people just standing around thinking somebody should do something. Hey folks, you're somebody. If all of you descended on those guys at once, guess who wins? But as usual, nobody wants to go first. Hey! Leave him alone! Nate, Hetty! can't believe he tackled those guys and rescued his friends. Suddenly, he really is the hero. I foresee trouble. Oh. Hey, masked man! Who are you anyway? He's an angel. I'm, uh... I'm, I'm the Avenging Angel. It took about 10 seconds for all this to go to his head. Now he has an ad in the paper. Need a crime fighter? He's your man. No problem. Too big or too small for the avenging angel. Yeah, he also thinks he's a wrestler. Thing is, Gloria can't follow him around all the time and keep him from bungling into something and getting himself killed. So what do they do about this? Go ahead, tell him. Richard, can you stop playing with the dog, please? He's in our next shift. What is this? What? What is this guy? A wrestler? <laughs> what are you guys kidding? Come on, that's wrestling? It's theater of the stupid. Hayes, we were there. Chloe. Well? She explains what she did and why. Billy has the lab full of dogs because they're studying dog dreams. While Dick is throwing a fit as usual and Billy is ignoring him as usual, Billy says, you two better straighten Milt out right away before he really gets himself hurt. Now that wasn't no accident and that wasn't any luck. That was me. Just tell him, Glow. Oh, tell me what? All my life I've been sitting in the corner practicing my moves and nothing. Now all of a sudden I'm sunk. I'm moon bound. <laughs> tell him, Glow. Hi. Saw your picture in the paper. You were great. Real hot. Yeah. That's my middle name. What's yours? They call me CJ. You're even cuter in person. <laughs> yeah. Do you wear your mask when you... Uh... I think he's hoping to find out, too. Now, Gloria, tell him. So you got something to say, shoot. I think you're going to be a terrific wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I got to run. Uh, good to see you guys again. Uh, if you need anything, you know where to get hold of me. 555-H-E-L-P. I have time for your crime. He's riding high and she doesn't have the heart to bring him down. And her soft heart may get him killed. She and Johnny argue and she storms off. Johnny's wondering what to do when a police car pulls up and then these guys appear. With a cop parked right across the street? That's Rick's. Just a little handshake and the street is yours. Give me a minute, and then go remind the guy in the glass store that his dunes are late. They're running a protection racket. Johnny watches one guy go over and slip some cash to the cop, whereupon the officer drives away. Yeah, go be man. Hey, thanks a lot for the Gloria Patrol. I tried, Billy. Believe me, she wouldn't tell him. You got any more great ideas? Be man you were my great idea. You used to be persuasive. She's still on a one-girl crusade to save Milt's big moment. It's noble. Not a great career move, but... Yeah, well, it's gotten worse. I just spotted the two clowns that started the rough stuff down at the arena. You're getting chummy with one of the beat cops. Yes, they're the same guys who were beating up the old man at the arena. And they're going to encounter the same superhero. Lucky for the glass shop owner, Milt just happened to be picking up his costume from the dry cleaners. Said superhero will take them down again and the same way. Well, look who saved us the trouble of finding it. Don't you guys ever learn? 
We owe you, boy! Which is to say, he has no idea how he did that. He must be a natural at this stuff. Oh, not again. What'd you expect me to do? I don't know, but I have a fair idea of what we can expect from that guy next. The world's pudgiest superhero is cutting into his business, which makes him a target. Now Johnny is really worried. He knows a mob boss when he sees one. Everybody is on Gloria's case for not telling Milt, and they're right. She insists Milt needs this right now, but what she's going to get him is a bullet in the head and some cement shoes to make him disappear in the ocean somewhere. Billy figures they'd better keep an eye on Milt, and Glow will tell him the truth. Right now, Johnny's headed to the arena to check on him. Elle will go along and back him up. Ooh. You want one? There's still more. Oh, no, thanks. No. No. <laughs> So tell me, Albert, how's your mother? You want to kick that blue? Yeah, she's fine, Mr. Rogers. Thanks. Good, now, good. She's a back sweet at... lady. Always reminds me of my Sarah. Yeah, she rest in peace. Most every mob boss has a mob boss of his own. Our guy is no exception. Now tell me about these two collection problems. Well, we would have got the skins, but this, this guy is some idiot looking for publicity because he wants to be a wrestler. This is where he lives, huh? Yeah. That girl was trouble at the glass store. He can't figure out how, but he was sharp-eyed enough to realize she did something to help Milt. Mr. Rogers, yes, that's his name, says this guy needs to go. And do it in such a way that everybody who sees what's left of him knows it was me. Remind them that heroes don't live very long. Oh, it's you again. Come on in. Thought you might have wanted some help from the angel, but were too shy to ask. <laughs> no, Milt, they're there to help you. Um, I'd like to talk to you about this uh, Avenger gig. Well, look, uh, if you're an agent, I think I'll pass. I got some uh, feelers out to some of the movers and shakers, and besides, I think I might take care of it myself. You see, uh, I got a call from Kovic at the arena. I got a match. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hey, that's great, Milt. Uh, it's, uh, it's wrestling circuit, huh? It's finally happened. Billy finally met someone who can talk him under the table. Milt is doing the same thing to him that he does to everybody else, and I think it has him a little baffled. Gloria, you're up. Milt, you didn't save Nate's life at the arena, and you didn't stop the guys at the glass door either. Yeah. Did you hear the one about the seven dwarfs? Milt. Listen to her, okay? It's true. They explain about Gloria's power, but without a demonstration, he's not going to believe a word of it, and they won't get a chance to demonstrate. Uh, uh, listen, I got to run. Uh, there's some junkies uh, ripping off purses in Heritage hey. Park. Hey, Milt, listen, man, don't, you can't go. You're going to get yourself hurt. I, I don't know what's wrong with you guys, but uh, leave me alone. Huh? Stop the doorknob from turning, Gloria. That's an easy enough demonstration. They won't think of that. He's off to stop those junkies. I think Gloria is starting to realize that however noble her motives were, she blew this one. Johnny, please. Stay out of it. No, I can't. I want to know who you're paying. Don't ask questions. Look the other way. Everybody else does. It's safer. Everybody except for Milk. He was the first one who ever had guts enough to stand up to those guys. Twice. Shut up, Nate. Don't be a fool. No, I've had enough. It's about time somebody else... Do That's the cop Johnny saw taking payola, so nobody dares say any more. And once Johnny and L leave, he'll shake the old folks down and dare them ever to say a negative word again. Johnny wants to know more, so L will shrink down and sneak into the back room to hear the conversation. You don't even know who these bums are. I didn't mean anything, Rick. I, I was just letting off a little steam. The only steam I want to see around here is in your bun warmer, old man. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. The age of instant information has shown the country just how many bullies become cops so they can throw their weight around legally. And local departments keep hiring them and have a hard time dumping them when they turn out to be bad. This kind of official corruption is what led to Wyatt Earp's famous vendetta ride. We'll have to talk about that someday. Angel! Help! 
Hurry! Hurry over here! Come on! You've heard of angels in the outfield? Welcome to Angels in Their Underwear. There he is! Now watch it! I wonder how Milt thinks he did that. Let's go see if he's all right. Hold it and go turn around. I agree. If this is another one of those surveys, I mean, soliciting in a public place, I mean, I think that's really tough. Thank you. What the heck is he babbling about surveys? What kind of survey taker gives you an order like that? He really is an idiot. Albert clubs glow and that van takes them both away. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's the match you have waited for. The crown prince of capital punishment, the headsman, meets a challenger most foul with a yellow streak a mile wide, the chicken man. Do I need to point out that he's dreaming again? It's filler and it's not all that funny. When you get the DVD set, watch it if you want to. Or not. I choose not. They're in a movie theater. They're chained to a couple of seats and Gloria's eyes are taped shut so she can't move anything. At the arena, Milt has learned that he's going to be wrestling Bates Motel of all people. And even better, he's supposed to win. He can get behind that. Well, that about it? Almost. I better stop off and see the motel is properly motivated. Mr. Rogers wants the Angel's halo in pieces. What Milt doesn't realize is Bates Motel is reading a very different script. That one says the Avenging Angel doesn't survive this match. And without Gloria to protect him, there's a good chance that's exactly what'll happen. Don't get so tense. You and the lady can split. As soon as your friend Milt gets his, in the ring today. Let's keep in mind this is all happening because Gloria is just too nice. Now, she's a teenager with a complex past. The fact that she has this level of caring for someone else is a testimony to her character. Her fumbling ways of showing it are a testimony to her immaturity. Once she grows up a bit and tempers her compassion with wisdom, she's a force to be reckoned with, with or without her powers. They discover the backs of their seats are loose and should come off easily, so a few well-placed kicks from Billy and Gloria can stand up. But she still can't see anything. Oh, look, just, just, stay, just stay still, okay? I'll find you. Okay, well, okay. Well, you, uh, you smell pretty good. Billy, I'm underage, all right? All right, I mean, how bad could the rap be for statutory smell, huh? Just pull the tape off and don't get any ideas, Billy. Besides her age, she's way too classy for you. Have Gloria do it, Billy. The van that brought them is right there. May as well take it. Uh, no keys. Gloria doesn't need keys, Billy. Let her take care of this. I get so tired of watching him try to prove he has a sufficient level of testosterone. They don't have time for him to figure out where his whatchamadingy is. They need to get to the arena before Milk gets himself killed. Killing is already in progress. Milt still doesn't realize he's been had. Bates just threw him out of the ring onto the cement floor right at L's feet. Milt, no! Stay down! Two! Three! Four! Come on, you little sissy! I'm not finished with you yet! Come on! Come on! Seven! He's starting to put it together, but he's still taking the beating of his life. 
Ella's begging Milt to let him throw in the towel, but Milt refuses. Next thing we know, he's on the floor again. His fans are begging him to quit before he really gets hurt. Come on, Come on stop it, referees! No. No. That's going to stop me. <laughs> As I said, he's putting it together, and Mr. Smug Three Chins sitting there grinning is solidifying the whole thing in his mind. And something is happening. He's getting killed! <laughs> One corrupt cop down for the count. Now let's see about Milt. <laughs> As I said, something is happening to Milt. Possibly for the first time ever, he's getting good and mad. I get the feeling Bates isn't used to being on the receiving end of all this. And when you get right down to it, without both guys following a script that says he wins, he's not that tough. The Avenging Angel is taking him apart. I got the room key right here. Remember Irving's rule number whatever? Bad guy always goes for a weapon. Now do you believe her? With the playing field even again, he says, thanks, I'll take it from here. didn't go as planned. Our big boys had better get out of there while the getting is good. Yeah, what's the hurry? We got time for your crime. Gotta catch it, huh? Or not. These guys want to talk to you about a glass shop and a few other things. Look, they brought some real cops. Yeah, Mr. Rogers is just going to be a member in his new neighborhood. It's a nice, feel-good story that was well done overall, so I can even forgive that. Milt is giving up crime fighting to wrestle full time. Now that he's helped root out some of the corruption, he should be able to have a decent career at it, at least for a while. Humanodyne is getting a thorough flea treatment, but the usual experiments continue, such as working with Mrs. Willis, the telepath. And Mr. Stepmeyer, there's a call from the fourth floor. Not the fourth floor. Yes, it is. The senior vice president is scratching. Yo, hey, Mr. Flea Man. Oh, Mr. Stetmeyer? Mr. Stetmeyer? Mrs. Willis, is there a problem? Oh, my word, yes. I've got to stop him before he uses... <laughs> Elevator number two. She appeared in a couple of episodes, and she doesn't grasp that it might be polite to ask people if it's all right to read their minds. But then again, why should she? She already knows the answer. They could pick up this big mallet and hit a gigantic gong that was hang hanging. <clears throat> you mean bimbos like Johnny B? He re <laughs> Okay. Bates just threw him out of the ring onto the cement floor onto slow down, jeez. Now that he's helped root out some of the corruption, he should be, okay. Me and my long sentences.